y'all want to just like yell into the mic? I took a piss in this yes, here parking exactly. garage. <laughs> I took a little pee and it felt great. Are you, wait, wait, are you recording? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You're recording right now, okay. <laughs> Alright, cool. Is this a sure SM57? It's an SM70. 7B? Yeah. Dude, this is like a $200 mic. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah. Right on. Yeah, yeah. I love you. I love you too. Are we going to be on social media? You are actually, yeah. Uh, Soundcheck podcast. Soundcheck podcast. Soundcheck podcast? Yeah, yeah. Heard. Heard, okay. Check out Ghosts of the Mud. Ghosts. All right, who can fucking reach right now? Ghosts of the Mud. Ghosts of the Mud. Check out my band. No, this is great. Buddy. This is great. I love this. This is the first time it's ever happened, so this is awesome. Y'all are cool. Check out Wraithborn and Ghost of the Mud. Wraithborn and Ghost of the Mud. Got it. It was kind of funny, though. Uh, anyways. anyways. You do what you got to do. I get it. Ghost of the Mud and Wraithborn. Ghost of the Mud and Wraithborn. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to rep those. Enjoy your night, y'all. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> right on. Want to just like roll one into it? All right. So, <laughs> yay. Uh, hey, what's sound up? check, y'all. Sound check. Um, <laughs> 2023, back at it. Yeah. It's your boys. So we just uh, got out of seeing um, Loathe, Periphery, and Under Oath. Yeah. Um, Friday, March 3rd, the Fillmore, Silver Spring. Great show. Um, Actually, I think we have a good amount to talk about, to be honest, like, as far as, like, album updates. Yeah. Like, um, Anthios just released a new album tonight. It actually, like, 12, uh, 12 a.m. this tonight, morning. Tonight, tonight. Or zero, zero for military time. And uh, I really love the new Anthios album. That shit is fucking bussin'. Bussin'? I still haven't checked it out. I have only heard their single, Absolute Zero. Dude, like, absolutely in purgatory and, like, fucking, uh, hold on, let me look it up right now. It's, like, sinking ships or whatever. But, like, um, I fucking love their new album. That Their new album, like, really surprised me. I think, like, I think this is the best shit that they've ever, uh, The Sinking Sun. That's my absolute favorite track from uh, their new album. Cool. Loved it. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to check it out. Um, awesome. It's not released yet, but we were talking about it earlier. I'm excited for Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia's collab album. Dude, that <laughs> when we uh uh we so we were talking about this album earlier and like uh so Danny Brown and J, uh JPEG Mafia have been like working on this album for a bit and like um I follow their podcast or at Danny Brown's podcast on YMH Studios and um He's a funny mother. He's a character. He's a funny motherfucker. I fucking love him, dude. He's super funny. He's he's zany and weird and just like one hundred percent himself. One hundred percent. Like he doesn't hold back or anything. Especially with, uh, when like the cutscenes are like montages. Like it's it's all him and like he doesn't. You you feel like you're not getting like gypped out on like him as a person. Yeah, we brought it up today. We unprompted. We didn't even like coordinate it. We both watched the episode with JPEG Mafia as the guest. God, um, it was it was such a fun episode. They're great together. Like uh, I, I never thought of them. Like, it's like all right, they have great chemistry. Yeah, great chemistry. I never thought of them like actually collaborating on an album, but like it makes sense. They're they're two completely different energy levels. They're both weird, but like they're both weird on a different spectrum. Like if that makes any sense, like um, yeah. Danny Brown is just like quirky weird and he will like say some shit that's like off the wall and like uh JPEG Mafia is weird in a way like um he will make some beats and like maybe post some weird shit that sounds like cryptic to me but it, in reality it doesn't really make any sense and uh I don't know I, I and then putting those two together like I think like make a fucking awesome like match my most anticipated album this year is the Ocean Collective. They're coming out with an album. They're coming out with a new album. They released a single. Um, 
I still I liked it. It's not super metal. It's um I think they said they were going to do a little bit more like electronic stuff on this album. It was kind of dancey. I don't know. I kind of liked it. Interesting. I actually haven't checked that. I haven't, I haven't been following them. Like since the last time we saw them like uh at uh Black Hat like that was my last instance and like last of uh I've started getting back into yeah. them recently. Yeah. I, I took a little break too. too. Lep- yeah, once I once I see a band live, it kind of scratches an itch, and I gotcha. I can kind of take a break from them. I feel like I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Like, um, it's like you want you see the band, uh, you feel the hype behind it, and then like you're satisfied. Your dopamine levels are satisfied after that, and then like yeah, good. it's like and- an energy crash afterwards. Yes, yes. So, like, after seeing Periphery, like, today, actually, like, I guess we're going to start from here. Um, seeing Periphery today, like, it was fantastic because, like, their new, the new, the singles from their new album, uh, Jen is Not a Genre. Yeah, releases next Friday. Yeah, and uh, they played Wildfire, which I was anticipating, like, but I was also kind of sad today because, like, since they weren't headlining, and they usually headline whenever they tour, but Under Oath was headline, which is not a bad headliner. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad headliner, but I'm like used to seeing like periphery uh headlining every time we see them. And they usually have like an hour or like an hour and a half set and a half set. And like um I feel like I wanted more. I wanted to see more yeah. of them and like play more of their older stuff. They play some stuff from P2. Uh, they played some stuff from their newer album, and then of course they played like stuff from P three, but like and, oh, and uh, like Juggernaut, yeah, play Juggernaut, little stuff. Juggernaut in the middle. Yeah, they tried to spread you know across their discography. It was probably my least set of theirs. I I could be wrong. I think this might be the eighth time I've seen them, but God. I've been spoiled where every time they were headlining or had like a really long set. Yeah, them contained to like forty minutes or whatever it was. Definitely, um, it hurts. It yeah, it didn't give me enough. Um, like you want to enjoy them a little bit more, like because you know, like I guess because like growing up with them, we've seen like their discography like growing up and like. And they've got a fun catalog. Like when they oh, headline yeah. and do an hour and a half, and they get to play a bunch of stuff, it, it's a great time. And um, do you remember the time, like, uh, where uh, th- when Mark Holcomb wasn't playing with them, it was just uh, Misha and Jake, and like Misha was just literally jamming with um, Matt Halpern. Oh yeah, and they did a little haunted chore stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they were just playing around, and I was just like, "Oh shit!" Like yeah. I was super happy to hear that shit. I don't know, but like uh, this this set was weird. Uh, so I guess we're gonna recap. Periphery had I think had a great set, super strong set. Um, Under Oath, I didn't really grow up with like the whole like uh, emo scene, but they played. They opened up with my favorite song, so I'll give them that. And like uh, they are a great band in general. They have a lot of energy. Uh, they definitely bring the crowd and definitely like bring a lot of nostalgia from a lot of the fans and I can't take that away from them. I can't because like just because I didn't grow up with it doesn't mean like uh, I'm going to take away from what other people feel and like uh, experience from like actually listening to their albums. I just listened to their hits and uh, I love their hits, but I didn't decide to like dive deep into their discography. But uh, Periphery was one of those bands where like, I dove deep into their discography and, like, uh, followed them from, like, I want to say, like, kind of like the beginning when they released their album, P1. And, like, uh, I know we're just kind of sad today. I think, yeah, I think we actually haven't talked about Periphery too much on the pod. No, um, I don't think we haven't, actually. Yeah, they're, like, favorite bands of ours. Um, P2 and I think maybe, like, Juggernaut Alpha are my yeah. favorite albums of theirs. Uh, mostly because just from start to finish, I like every single song. The rest of their albums, like a nitpick I have, there's no song of theirs that I outright hate, but there's a good bit of albums where there's the like three to four songs that I'm obsessed with and I love, and everything else is like, eh, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, 
yeah, super into them. You know, they're kind of a love it or hate it group. Uh, it seems like the linchpin for that being like Spencer's vocals. Some people mm. just like eat it up or can tolerate it. Others can't take it at all. Especially during P1. Yeah. Especially during P1. But I mean, you know, he's proven his chops. Um, the band's embraced him. He's not going anywhere. They've proven they're heavy as hell. Oh, dude. Um, yeah. Their tone is immaculate. And like uh, it, it doesn't cease to surprise me every time. Like they release a single, they release like one of some of their heaviest songs, and it doesn't get any. It they, it always like matches like their standard for heaviness. Yeah, they don't dial stuff down. No. with each release. No, like uh, it's not like oh, this is kind of heavy. It's as when they release a song that they know it's gonna be heavy. Like I respect that from them because like um. Th- I think they're the type of band that they only release stuff that they feel like that they're truly proud of, and they're really willing to show the to uh, to the public. You know what I mean? Because I feel like there's a lot of like album, uh, songs that we haven't heard from them, but with them, uh, I just feel like when a song is truly heavy and melodic and like it hits all like the boxes. Like, I think that's when they release it. People write them off as just being gent. Um, oh. But, like, they are progressive metal. And, you know, with each album, you can kind of hear new things that have in- influenced them and new ways they integrate. Intra- <laughs> integrate? What's the word? Uh, I don't know. In- Fuck. Bring it- in things. Um, integrate. Yeah. That's it. There we go. My I, my mouth couldn't say it. <laughs> um, they integrate new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, they're one of those bands where, like, sometimes I'll re-listen to them and things come at you so blazing fast you don't kind of take it all in on the first listen. 100, yeah. Um, But there's a lot going on that you can kind of peel the layers back with the songwriting and the uh, instrumentation. Mm Mm-hmm. No, you can definitely tell, like, the way they uh, integrate, like, at least the electronic... Oh, my bad. Oh, good. And uh, electronic parts of their music, like, they definitely listen to more more than just like what they play to be honest yeah yeah you get you know misha plays a lot of well a couple of them play video games and so you can hear some sort of like musical nods like misha's huge into final fantasy oh 100 yeah yeah. and then well on the latest one of their singles was zagreus which is named after the main character of the video game hades yeah honestly i haven't played that it's so good i got addicted to it and then towards the end of the song there's even a little musical nod to it which is like the theme from the game interesting yeah it was okay. cool shit like i know he got commissioned to like make the final fantasy theme uh i forgot exactly for which final fantasy though there's there's another game i think it's deus ex human revolution i had no idea misha did a song for it i beat the game the credits start rolling and this like meaty gent song starts playing yeah and i'm like where what is this and then i look it up and yeah it was misha made the song for it interesting yeah misha is very heavily into like a uh, video game and then like gets com- uh i guess commissioned to do video games as well could be uh, not, not commissioned to video games. Commissioned to do video game music. Yeah. There we go. I, yeah, so, again, like, this is probably my least favorite set of theirs, mostly because of the length of it. Um, 
and maybe because of that, like they didn't have as much energy as what I've seen before. Like at oh, least I thought, yeah. you know, they weren't as like playing with each other as much and not quite as much crowd work. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminded me, I said to you on the way, it reminded me a little bit of the contortionist show where it's like, it wasn't bad. They were still doing everything they needed to do and they still sounded great. Mm-hmm. But it's just like this weird realization of like, they are aging. The fans are aging. We all are just getting a little bit less energy than those like early heydays when we started things. Yeah. God. I hate thinking about that too. Like, uh, I gu- so I guess we'll set the tone off today. Um, the whole lineup was supposed to start at like seven. In reality, it started around like seven forty-five, and Loath was supposed to play at seven, but they only had time to play like one song because they were having a lot of like technical difficulties on their end, so they couldn't really hear what they were playing. And um, when they did play, they were only able to play Gord, so like the very last song that they usually end with and it's like it's usually like their heaviest track it's a sick song i i fucking love it i think it's a great song heavy get straight to the point and then like just fucking caveman yeah into the pit our last episode our last concert we were at was seeing them in november yeah and yeah they sounded amazing it was such a fun show absolutely Um, so this was a huge bummer and it sucks because like uh i had energy this time I had energy energy this time, so I was able to like uh, go into the pit, and um, and even when they did play, the guitarist's amp died out on him. Oh, some people said they some people said they couldn't hear the bass. Yeah, it was just oh, it was it I was awkward. Hear the I kick felt, drum like I felt so bad for them. God, but kudos to them to still playing. Yeah, at least that song. I'm not gonna take that away from them. Like. Every band has like their shitty days. Yeah, and Under like, Oath said something about it later. 100%. They were like, buy some of their merch. You know, it's, yeah, we've been there. Like, absolutely. Like, not every show is perfect. And uh, I think definitely respect the bands that are on tour, going through this shit, and then they have to figure it out the next day. Periphery's been through it for sure, especially uh, with Dream Theater. <laughs> like, I remember like Misha was uh, on the tour bus. I actually no no, that sounds wrong because that sounds like I was there. But like so, I remember Misha talking about when I was watching a YouTube video about like when they were touring with Dream Theater, um, how they were having a lot of technical difficulties, and John Petrucci from Dream Theater came up to them and said, "You got to figure some sh- that shit out," <laughs> because they're a high profile band. They yeah. can't they can't have that. Yeah, like, on t- their tours, and um. I think it it just comes with the territory. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. The times that I've seen Loathe, fantastic. I love it. Uh, Just today, I was a little sad that I had the energy to fucking, like, go go out for them. And I wasn't able to. And their technical issues, like, got in the way. And then perfectly, which wasn't a bad trade-off, but, like... I was so sad because I really wanted to see Loath like with the energy that I had. Yeah, yeah, and just interesting to have that quick overlap of like seeing the same band in just a span of a couple months. Oh yeah. Usually we gotta like wait a year for them to come back to the area because mm-hmm. it's not like we're like following them around on a tour. No, no, no we're not like deadheads. <laughs> Some people fucking do that, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah. I don't have the time to. I can't take off like that much work. No, I can't take that much off work either. Um, a realization I made leading into like Under Oath is so we actually saw them headline a year ago, mm-hmm. and to me it was kind of a similar similar situation where like I never really listened to them or knew of them, even though they've you know people were mentioning they've been around for like almost twenty years now. Um, but it was like. It was the two last time I was there. I wanted to see Stray from the Path and Spirit Box. Mm-hmm. I think we missed Stray from the Path for whatever reason. Oh, and yeah. then, yeah, this time I just wanted to see Loathe and Periphery. Um, but I liked Under Oath more this time. I didn't really vibe with them last time. They just, 
it just wasn't um, doing just it for there. me. But this time they were really animated. I mean, the guitarist was like having the most fun out of anyone. Um, oh yeah, I could tell he was like moving side to side on stage. Him and the right. keyboardist, yeah. they were just going insane. I always kind of find it funny when the keyboardist is like going ham because I'm like, you just standing one spot, like occasionally like pressing a chord here and there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, it's still a fantastic time. Still part of the music, whatever. Uh, I'm gr- glad that they were animated. Yeah. They- Maybe it was also the first day of the tour, too. Really? I knew it was early. I didn't realize it was the first one. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, like, they had the most energy. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, they had heavy riffs. They were catchy. I definitely get why people have some nostalgia with them. Oh, no, it is the first day of the tour, yes. hey oh. Yeah, it is the first day of the tour. So we got them at their peak, and it just sucks that Loathe started the tour on, like, a bad note. Yeah. Ugh. Hopefully we'll get the I hope, I hope that they have a better resolution throughout the tour. Yeah, definitely. God. Ugh. It would have been great to see them live because I I am like now curious about their set list like what what they would have played. I know that's what I was curious of because when we saw them it was playing an album in its entirety. Oh my so god! So I would have yeah. liked to have heard like kind of like what Periphery did like something kind of dabbling throughout their whole discog. Mm hmm. One hundred percent. Like I definitely would have loved to hear like Cold Sun. Like. Mm hmm. Oh, that song's so heavy. But like uh like seeing like I let in I let it in and they took everything. Great album, great album. Just sucks. I would I didn't have energy that day. Yeah, and I had energy. Ener- and I had energy today. I know I had energy tonight. I was in the pit for all the periphery. God, um, yeah. But like, I don't feel fully satisfied. Probably because I I would have tried to been in the pit for a good bit of loathe as well. True. Oh, dude, like, did, did I tell you, like, um, when we were in the pit, there was some fucking guy trying to like block me off, but like he was trying to grab my nipple. You did, yeah. It was weird. I'm like, like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I, yeah, I also had a guy that kept kind of feeling me up, too. Sometimes I'd, like, look him in the face, and I don't know, he, like, wasn't looking at me or anything in particular. I, I don't know, maybe he was, like, really spaced out on some drugs or something. No, like, literally to me, this guy was, like, going like this, but then he was going, like, <laughs> he's going like this. like little pinch, pinch. little pinch, pinch. End. And I'm yeah. just like, what the fuck? Like, I looked at him, and then, like... What the f- what are you doing? Yeah. Like I was just like I'm here enjoying my time. Like I, I get you're trying to block me, but you why are you trying to go for my nipple? <laughs> like I don't know. Like if you hear this podcast, like I hope you know like like tall lanky dude with the fucking long hair. Fuck you. We, like, got, our, we got our sights on you. Yeah, yeah. we got we, I remember what you look like. Well yeah, we'll send our groupies at you. Yeah, one hundred. <laughs> but it's just like and then like I had one person like literally trying to like <laughs> uh, like blocking, but he's also trying to like backhand me a little bit, and like I literally was like, "What are you doing?" There was a lot of crowd surfers. Yeah. I had to keep turning around to look out for them. There was one point where I got kicked in the back and then elbowed in the gut, like Ugh. one immediately after the other, and I went, "Oh, oh shit!" <laughs> like oh that God, doesn't dude. feel good. You're like that doesn't feel good. Yeah, that that pain lingered for a little bit. Oh my god! Throughout the set, I kind of just took it easy from then on. Oh my god! I literally once I started getting exhausted, I was like, all right, I gotta go back to where I was and like um, get my coat and beer because <laughs> I felt bad for the person like holding my stuff because I was like, thank you for holding it. Yeah, just hand it off. Like please, just hold it because I really gotta go in and like get all this energy out. It was a good time. I did enjoy the pit. Just, like, those two guys, like, really kind of, like, questioned me. Like, I wanted to question them a little bit. Like, why you were trying to go for my nipple? Yeah. Like, why? That's, a like, a weird thing. I get it. You're trying to block me off. Fine. I respect that. But why'd you go for the nipple? Because I felt that, like, a few times. I felt you pinch. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> And then uh, I guess we stayed back for Under Oath, to be honest. Yeah, we stayed for their full set. Once they actually, uh, I only really cared for one song, which they opened with, was like it's uh, dangerous walking out your back door. And originally, I was I thought they're gonna play that like 
towards the middle of their set, but they opened with it. And I was like, oh, well, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah. I guess this is uh, this is how you're gonna open with it, which is a good song. I love that song. That's the song that got me into them. Yeah, I thought they had a good set because me not knowing, being familiar with any of their material, was kind of watching them and um, them interacting with the fans and having so much energy on stage. Um, and they also just sounded good. And I, I had these moments where I was like, oh, I should check out their stuff. It's a good, like, they're great. Like, I like them a lot. I'm not sure what to do for a score. This is this is a weird one. So I'm going to give, like, I guess I said earlier, I, I think I'm going to give this, like, a 6.8. Yeah. like Because, a- like, Periphery carried a lot of that. A lot of that weight. And, like... Sorry, Loath. Like I'm, I really am sorry for your like your technical difficulties and like uh, it happens throughout tour. But like, I'm just gonna be honest. Like I was in the pit and I heard like sound cut out and I understand. I understand what you're going through. But like, I'm just gonna keep it real. It was like a six point eight. Yeah. Yeah, and like, I, I would have loved to see y'all like in a bigger venue and like I was really excited for y'all, but. Which yeah. is really sad. Hopefully they'll be back around. I th- I hope they'll go- they'll be back around. I want to see them again, and like, I sort of like yeah a <laughs> six or a six point five is mm-hmm. what's feeling right for me, but I'm worried that seems too low because I'm trying to remember what we gave that Rings of Saturn <laughs> show because this definitely wasn't worse than that, but no. I can't remember the score, so it's better than that. <clears throat> so I don't know, maybe yeah, I'll go with six point five or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. God, the Rings of Saturn show that was bad. Cause yeah. we, were, I was excited to see Rings, but then they had like, I, it's a combination that I. They had like technical difficulties, and like the music was just like bad. Yeah, this like new EP of theirs. It's like a new direction or whatever. It just it's wasn't like, it, it just ain't wasn't it. it? Yeah. Um, but with Low, this is more like we saw them a few times, and. Um, I kind of knew what to expect, which not to say I didn't see Rings of Saturn a few times, but like uh, with Rings of Saturn, I I saw them execute the new stuff, and I was just generally disappointed. Yeah. And then with uh, Loathe, I'm familiar with the discography, and they haven't released any new stuff, and um, I was just more excited to like finally have energy to mosh to their to their current lineup their current set list and it just i don't know luck of the sh- uh i guess what draw luck of the straw was luck the, of the draw luck of the draw there you go uh they just had a bad show yeah but they still played one song which is better than nothing yeah i don't know but periphery can definitely carried that weight for that score yeah they were most of my draw and fun tonight i wish it was a longer set yeah, and a bit more energy, but yeah, you know, they'll headline again. I'm sure sometime. Concerts like you can't win them all. Yeah, you can't win them all, and like that's just part of the game. But like, if you really support the bands that you love, you go see them again. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm def- I would definitely see Lowe's again uh, when they come back to Maryland or like Philadelphia, and like um. Yeah, enjoy their time again back in the states. Yeah, and periphery, we've seen them a handful of times. Yeah, I, I, I'll correct it on screen or something if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is like the eighth time. Mm-hmm. I believe we've seen them so many times. Mostly dude. headlining. I mean, like Ram's Head Live, Soundstage, it's always Fillmore, been Soundstage. Yeah. Electric Factory. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, remember the one time where like they were like. Headlining when uh, Animals Leaders were playing, but we literally only went to Philadelphia to go see uh, Car Bomb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I loved that show. That, that was, show was that good. was a stacked set. Yeah, that was awesome. Car Bomb, Periphery, Animals as Leaders. Oh, Animals as Leaders killed it with that show. Like, I think I loved like Philadelphia crowds after that. Yeah, I was like, this show was awesome. The Philadelphia crowds definitely had more energy. And like, not to say like Maryland crowds don't really have energy, but like. uh it just doesn't compare. Yeah. It doesn't compare. And uh, I don't know. I think overall I give this show a 
uh, periphery carrying a majority of that weight. I'll do 6.5, mostly yeah. periphery. Yeah. It's not a bad show, but it was just kind of like, damn. Yeah, it was like decent. Yeah. I'm not like, uh, clearly, I'm not like pumped <laughs> full of adrenaline. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, after like a Mashuga or something, dude, I'm like Mish- vibrating. Dude, oh my God. After we after we saw Mashuga, that was church. Yeah. That was a good set. I know. I, I regret not going crazy for them. I, 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 I want them to come back again. And they will too. Like, I think we, every time they come back to the States, I'm not not going to see them. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I They're mean, a definite for me. I'll I'll go. I'll do whatever to see them. One hundred percent. Like, oh, sorry, you, you have a funeral that day. <laughs> sorry, I'm seeing Mashuga. <laughs> sorry, Granny. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got to see Mashuga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you want to be a witness to your fucking uh, like murdered uh, court? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta go see Mashuga. <laughs> sorry, I can't be your character witness. <laughs> yeah, I can't be your witness. I gotta go see Mashuga. I don't, I don't care if it's early in the day. I gotta go see my sugar. Oh, I was gonna be the determining factor in your like custody, child custody <laughs> case. Nah, I gotta see my sugar. <laughs> uh, nah, my sugar. I. Oh, I'm sorry, we were gonna get married on what day? My sugar's playing that day. <laughs> yeah, no, I gotta go see my sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll be oh, in we Hawaii. booked the venue like a year in advance or whatever. Oh no, I no. Like, no, <laughs> no, that's not gonna work out. My sugar's playing that day. <laughs> yeah, sorry, babe. <laughs> Our wedding can wait. My sugar can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they can only ble- play bleed for so many more years, <laughs> and I have to be there for every single one of yeah. those. <laughs> uh, no, but like uh, on a serious note, my sugar, whatever happens on a certain day, I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign my divorce papers. See my sugar. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no. Uh, on a real note, like uh, today, I bought the I bought this ticket last minute, uh, which sucked, and I feel like I didn't really get like the value of it. I know I normally am happy with it, but like uh, it just sucks. Yeah, Lowe didn't have a. I don't, I can't imagine Lowe being happy with like their outcome, especially like um the start of the tour. The start of the tour. And like uh, the beginning of the set, and then like I don't, I don't think it's possible for them to push back a uh, set list. Yeah, not by that much. Yeah, no, the not length by of four, their full set. No, like thirty minutes. I think like that would have been acceptable, or fifteen minutes. But like a whole set, and that's not gonna happen. And like whatever. Yeah, you can't win them all. Yeah, I think I'm stand by six point eight with my with my score. Yeah, six point five. All right. <laughs> well, next show we're going to is uh, Obscure and Flesh God. Actually, yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. Like, I haven't seen uh the same weekend Flesh God Apocalypse. I haven't seen Flesh God since they came back with um, Winter Sun. I've never seen them, and I'm very excited. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Italian tech death gabagool with uh <laughs> yeah with like orchestras and an operatic singer oh my god yeah they dress up in the corpse paint and like this like classical mm-hmm. composer outfits or something yeah I'm excited for it I uh and Obscura too I'm excited for Obscura I yeah. really like Obscura a lot yeah they never disappoint yeah I'm definitely excited to see both they're both like pretty heavy hitters mm-hmm all right, well, uh, I have nothing else to say. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for listening and hope to catch you at the next show. Uh, this is Walter. This is Brent. Good night. Good night. <laughs>